Hi, and welcome to our video on the slope intercept form of a line, which is, I, you know, I introduced this in the past couple of videos as the standard equation for a line, and in many, in many cases it is, but I, I wanted to talk about, you know, really what this equation is telling us, and why it's useful, and how to apply it, because there are other forms as well. So I just wanted to review this one and, and name it and talk about why and when it's helpful. So again, this is called the slope-intercept form of a line. And you know, that, that's a quite literal definition. This form of the line tells you what the slope is, and it tells you what the y-intercept of a line is. And that's, that's why it's called that, because there are other forms of a line standard form, horizontal, vertical form, and point slope form. But here, this one focuses on the slope and the y-intercept. So when is it really useful? Well, it's very useful for graphing, and it's also very useful when you have the slope or the y-intercept of a line. So let's just, let's write this out. Let's say we have y equals 2x, no, sorry, 5x, right? plus negative 5. Well, what does this mean? Well, first of all, we would rewrite this to y equals 5x minus 5, simplify adding a negative. Well, this tells me that minus 5, right, b is equal to negative 5, that's the y-intercept. So I know right away on this line it has to cross this point right here. So you can see how it's useful for graphing as you get this reference point right away. There's our y-intercept. And now we're given the slope. So m is equal to 5. Why is that really helpful? Well, in terms of graphing, right, with the, a slope of 5, that means our rise over our run, right, slope is rise over our run, can be written as 5 over 1. Right, 5 over 1, that just means 5 divided by 1, and that's just 5. But I'd write it like this so I can see, okay, what's the rise... Well, that's the delta y, that's 5. And what's the run? Well, that's delta x. And that, in this case, is 1. And this means if I, I have this y-intercept, if I want to draw the rest of my line, all I have to do is go up 5 on the y-axis and over 1 on the x-axis. right? Or if I went up, and you, know, you could write this as other equivalent fractions, instead of 5 over 1, you could write it as 10 over 2, which is... Of course, the same thing. Or you could, you could triple it. You could write 15 over 3. You can quadruple it, 20 over 4. Or multiply it by 5 on each side. Whatever helps, right? 25 over 5. I'm going to use this one because notice my x increments are in, in 5. So it's very easy to see how this works. It just means I go up 25 and then over 5 to find the next point. So let's do that. 5. 10, 15, 20, 25, and over 5. So that slope tells me, you know, and I could have broken this down in smaller chunks if I had a grid, that if I go up 25, that's my rise, and over 5, I could find the next point on our line. And you only need two points to determine a line, right? Once these two points are set, once I connect them, there's no other line that could fit here. I could add a third point, but I don't need it. In other words, I've already found the line. And that's our line right there. The line for y equals right 5x minus 5. So if we know our slope and our y-intercept, we can quickly graph the equation of our line. Another thing to focus on here is how we can use this slope-intercept form to find other points on the line. And at first, it might seem like, well, how could I do that? I only have x and y here, my y-intercept and my slope. But, you know, you've already found another point. When you went up 25 and over 5, you landed at this point right here. Let's examine what that point is. If I go up 25, and I'm starting all the way down here at negative 5, the height of this point has to be 20, right? Because I go up 5 and 25 more, altogether, that's 20 above 0. And how far over is this point? Well, this point is over 5 on the x-axis. So it's 25. So we can use this formula with our slope, and we can do it again or in other increments, to find other points on the line. 
so we can count up and over for any any point or you can reverse it I can go right over 5 this way and then down 20 that would bring me off the grid over here but down sorry more like right here it would bring me to another point on the grid so you can use it to quickly find other points but you don't even need the picture and that's you know that, that's the great thing about this having a formula like this 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 formula in slope intercept form tells us that um, this formula determines every point on the line so in other words if you plug any x value in anything at all that'll tell you the y value it'll tell you the point on the line let me just clear that for a moment for example if I look at two and a half on the x axis well if I plug that in here in two and a half for x and calculate it this formula will tell me what the point is on the line when x is two and a half so if you want to find other points on this line you can plug anything in here let's try it y equals five times two and a half right minus five so pick a random x x value and plug it in well what's that going to be well five times two and a half is is what well five times two is ten five times a half is two and a half so that's twelve point five twelve point five minus five is our y value and that is well excuse me twelve minus twelve minus five is seven so twelve point five minus five is seven and a half what does that mean? Well, that means when your x value is two and a half, which we plugged in, the y value of the point on the line is seven and a half. And you can see it right here. Unfortunately, my drawing is, is a little bit off. I kind of ruined that. Here's two and a half here. Go up, right? There you can see is about seven and a half. So this point right here, when we plugged in two and a half, right, on the line is at two and a half, seven and a half. So you can plug in any x value. Now my, my other line here, I'm sorry, is, is definitely a little bit off because I chose a point below two and a half and then I tilted it. I should have kept it straight up so you can see where it hits on the line. So just so I don't really confuse you there, let's try another example. So how do you use this form to find any point on the line? Let's try another example to really make sense of how to use this formula and how to plug in to find another point because I'm afraid I might have confused you there on the last example. So again, y is equal to mx plus b and we call this what? We call it the slope intercept form. Again, because in this form of the equation, we can quickly see what the slope and intercept are. So how do we how do we get started? Well, we're making this example up, so let's pick our our y intercept. I'm going to choose this point down here, negative 10 and we're going to make up our slope. Well, if I want my slope to go up 10 and over 5, right, then that slope is 2. So y will equal 2x minus 10, because minus 10 is our y-intercept, and our slope, right, is based on the rise and run. So the rise is 10 and the run's 5. That means delta y is 10 and delta x is 5, so our slope is just 2. 10 divided by 5 is 2. And now we have another point. And we can connect these two dots to create our line. It's a little bit off. Let me fix that. A little bit better. And now we have our line. And we have another point already. This point over here is, is what? Well, we started at 0, negative 10. That's our y-intercept. Went up 10. That brings us to 0 and over 5. So this is 5 on the x-axis, 0 on the y. And you might have guessed, since this point crosses the x-axis, this is called the x-intercept. And we'll talk in other videos about why that's very really useful in, in other forms. So that's the x-intercept. We have another point. But I, you know, I've been saying that, that this equation is great because you can plug in any number for x, and that will give you the y value at that point. So I'm going to plug in negative 5 here. And if I plug negative 5 into this formula, it should tell me the height of the line at that point. So it'll give me a coordinate down here. Now we already know the x value of the coordinate is negative 5. We're going to plug it into the formula to find the y value. So y equals 2 times negative 5, that's our x value, minus 10. 2 times negative 5, that's negative 10. Minus 10 will give us our y value. 
What's negative 10 minus 10? Well, that's just negative 20, right? And you can see it here. And this time I didn't mess it up in my picture. We went over 5 on the x, plug that in, and it tells us go down 20. That'll be the point on the line. And we could see that from the slope as well, right? Because if you look at the slope, let me clear that, it matches this other increment right here. Except if we start at the y-intercept, we go back 5 on, on the x-axis and down 10 on the y-axis. Either way, we get our new point, which is negative 5, negative 20. So again, this formula can help us find any points in the line. It can help us find intercepts. It, it helps us quickly graph. Uh, it just, in my opinion, is very useful. So I hope this helped. In the next video, we'll look at another form called point-slope form. All right, thanks.